lockdown is in effect. Turbolifts have been sealed to continue. Find the emergency supplies? Damn it. Oh, I mean, good. Good to hear it. No sense in you running around half naked. It's... It's distracting. I mean, for the droids. Look, there may be some survey gear and a safety harness inside the crate, too. The miners wear them when staking claims on the asteroids. The survey gear is designed to spot and protect you against sonic mines. 
and the safety harness can be helpful if you try to disarm them. Yeah, it's like a military-issue energy shield, except it's designed to protect the miners against lasers and heat. Should work against the droid mining lasers. It won't last forever, and certainly not against multiple laser hits. But it may buy you some time if you get ambushed by a battalion of droids. Just equip it on your wrist, and then you can activate it like a med pack. Again, it won't last forever, so make it count. Uh, just one more thing. I've narrowed down some of the ID signals, and if the numbers are right, you're sharing those tunnels with a battalion of mining droids. You could, if you have the skill in a stealth field generator. These droids rely on thermal sensors, primarily to detect fuel deposits. The good thing is, that explosion down there kicked up so much heat and steam it may blind them. A bit, but not much. Well, these are construction models. They shoot like a moisture farmer militia. Since they rely on ranged weapons, get in close with a melee weapon and start bashing them. In close combat, the guy with the vibro blade has the edge over the guy with the rifle, droid or not. Otherwise, just drill them from a distance. If they're not shielded, that is. Yeah, it's possible some of the droid models may have mining shields on. If so, the shields may absorb laser fire. You can usually tell when a shield is active. It'll make an electrical field around the target. If they activate a shield, the best thing you can do is hit them with a melee weapon or try to burn out the shield with continual fire. But that could take a while, and it leaves you a target. You could, if you have the skill. The good thing is... There's got to be some central controller down there. See if you can find a terminal by the main access shaft. That'd be governing intelligence. Watch where you step. I'm picking up a lot of sonic mines down there. Don't run unless you have to. It makes them harder to spot. If you have any skill with demolitions, you might be able to recover them and use them against the droids. That is, if the mines don't get you first. If you have survey gear or a safety harness, put them on. They'll make spotting and disarming the sonic charges a little easier. Those mining droids, especially the excavator models, are designed to arm and set sonic charges for mining. Chances are if they still had charges after they went rogue, then they may have set them to try and kill the miners. And you. If you see one of those excavators, watch out. They may use their undeployed charges as projectiles. Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't like this. Sure, if you have a stealth field generator. It'd make it an easy walk to the central droid controller.
picking up some strange readings. What are you doing down there? The containment fields in the mining tunnels are shutting down. You need to get out of there before they vent fuel to the surface of the asteroid through the tunnels. I may be able to keep it contained until you get the turbo lift to the fuel depot, but not for much longer. I'm locking down the turbo lift to the administration section now to keep the blast from spreading. If you've got anything left to do down there, make it quick, because where you are is going to get real hot real soon. It is a pleasure to see you alive, Master, provided my receptors are not off focus. How may I be of assistance? Answer. I am a survivor of the Harbinger, just as you were, Master. With the unexpected termination of my previous Master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Irritated answer. Oh, Master, it is such a long, dull story, and not terribly relevant to our current situation. Hesitant explanation. That has been the subject of considerable discussion since our arrival here, Master. Many have attempted to claim you and this unit as salvage. I was crudely interrogated concerning our brief history together on board the Harbinger before its communications, weapons, and engines suffered the cascade failure that disabled the ship. Speculation. It is possible you were incapacitated and locked in the well-shielded cargo compartment as the Harbinger was being systematically crippled, Master. Clarification. Yes, Master. No doubt the flurry of destruction on board the Harbinger somehow drugged you into a stupor from which you could not awaken. Most curious. Placation. Merely a turn of phrase, Master. The implication that your state was due to the result of ingesting large quantities of Juma juice was unintentional. I meant to communicate only that you were somehow rendered unconscious before you were locked securely in the cargo hold. Clarification by locked. I meant sealed, Master. My vocabulator seems to be malfunctioning. Recitation. Following the unusual set of coincidences that led to the cascade failure in the Harbinger's systems, we were boarded by a small freighter with unknown ID codes. It appeared that this freighter had been attacked, and the captain wanted to study it. This freighter appeared to be still spaceworthy. Your cargo compartment was breached, and you were taken on board the freighter shortly before the Harbinger systems began to go critical. I, too, managed to board the freighter before the Harbinger's destruction. We were most fortunate to have survived, Master. Evaluation. Master, I do not know. 
Judging from the damage, it had been attacked by a much larger vessel. And when it attempted to escape the Harbinger with you on board, it was fired on again. Addendum. It does seem odd that such a small vessel has a high probability of attracting the attention of much larger vessels. Not a welcome trait in a freighter, to be sure. Explanation? I believe it was a smuggler's vessel by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Speculation. As to its purpose, I do not know. Perhaps it was always its intention to play dead, then kidnap you off the Harbinger and rob me of my bounty. Clarification. By bounty, I refer to your life, Master. It would pain me to see you damaged in any way. That is why the arrival of this Ebon Hawk caused me considerable distress. Apology. My memory core cannot provide a clear answer on that point, Master. Suffice to say that once we arrived at this floating rock, our situation became much clearer. Explanation. Despite my market value, Master, the miners were far more interested in you. It did not take long for me to ascertain the reason for this. While an HK protocol droid is a valuable piece of property, Jedi are worth much more in certain exclusive markets across the galaxy. Painful admission. I must confess to feelings of inferiority at the speculated difference between my value and the price for your capture. I was forced to remind myself it was not due to a failing of my model or function, but because you were a Jedi. Surprised answer. Why, I told them, Master. You are the exiled Jedi who served with Revan in the Mandalorian Wars, are you not? I hope all that has happened has not been the result of a miscommunication. If so, then the problem lies with the core word databases, which are notoriously spotty. Answer. All that has happened has been because they believe you to be a Jedi, Master. They debated what to do with you as you lay unconscious in the medical bay. One group seemed intent on selling you as property. The other group opposed this. Three standard hours after the division between the miners became apparent, accidents began to occur throughout the facility. A result of improper maintenance, I believe. These accidents coincided with the degradation of the mining droid behavioral cores. Crude models are prone to such failures, resulting in murderous rampages. The mortality rate of organics in the facility rose quickly. Many miners began to join you in the medical bay as a cascade of flawlessly timed detonations occurred in isolated gas pockets in the lower levels of the facility. The explosions herded the miners into emergency sections of the station quickly and efficiently, cutting them off from communications and facility control. But sadly enough, not the ventilation systems. You see, the explosions had damaged specific sections of this facility's ventilation systems, causing a slow, lethal buildup of toxic fumes in the dormitory level. Answer. I do not know, Master. Ironically enough, any miner that fled to the dormitory level to protect themselves from the droids and the explosions would find themselves in a gas-filled death trap. It is unlikely any miners remain alive. As I said, the dormitory has been cut off from the rest of the facility, as has the hangar bay. There is no escape. Apology. Unfortunately, communication with the dormitory section is severed, Master. It is perhaps for the best, especially if any other accidents have occurred in that section. If that were the case, the severed comm link would have spared us the satisfaction of hearing the miners' screams as they lived out their last moments in fear and terror. Rapid retraction. Why, yes, satisfaction in knowing their fate, Master. 
It would be unfortunate if they had been slaughtered. But there would be a calm, comforting certainty that there is nothing we can do to escape until a ship arrives. Theory. You could walk across the surface of the asteroid to the dormitory airlock, but such a route would be extremely hazardous, and I do not wish to see you damaged. Morning. Master, continued exploration of this facility may place you in unnecessary danger. I encourage you to return to the medical bay and wait for retrieval from a vessel that is no doubt on the way, even as we continue this pointless conversation. Weary resignation. Very well, Master, but there is very little that I can do. You see, the airlock is sealed by a code. Correction. Oh, I already possess the code, Master, but I am afraid that it will do you no good. Condescending explanation. Master, the console governing the droid maintenance area and the airlock is voice printed, musing. In the last days of his life, the maintenance officer was quite careful about voice protocols bordering on paranoid obsession. Conjecture. I suspect once he realized something was wrong in the facility, he voice locked the droid bay functions. A prudent measure, but in the end, he met the same fate as the rest of the organics. Explanation. Yes, Master. Many consoles have voice recognition sensors built into their systems so that only selected individuals can unlock them. Condescending explanation. Oh, yes, Master. The code is Maintenance Control Voice Print ID R1B5. But unless the maintenance officer speaks the code, it is useless. Answer. Master, you cannot. You are trapped here just as I am. There is nothing to do except patiently wait for whatever the future has in store for us. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Proud answer. I am an HK series protocol droid master, skilled in transorganic relations and communications. This model has been responsible for the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities across the galaxy. I am fluent in over 6,000 forms of communication, and am also capable of nuances of expression ranging from irony to veiled threats. Irritated explanation. That question has been looping through my query module with alarming frequency, Master, and no satisfactory answer has been forthcoming. As a result, I have chosen instead to turn my efforts to answering the question as to how I may depart this drifting disaster area as quickly as possible. Answer. It is only a matter of time before a ship or freighter docks with the Paragus facility. When that occurs, we shall depart this place forever. Condescending retraction. I believe you will do your best, Master. This facility would have to be nailed down with a droid-level precision to prevent your escape. Of course, Master. Proud and this model has been I am fluent in over... Clarification. 
Oh, yes, Master. Sometimes the facilitation of communications and termination of hostilities requires the use of every weapon in one's verbal arsenal. The unspoken threat of violence to a listener's loved ones, or if possible, their entire planet, can effectively break the deadlock in the most stubborn of negotiations. Of course, Master. How may I be of assistance? Hesitant answer. Ah, a T3 utility droid would be a common sight in this facility. It is indeed curious that I have not seen many since my arrival. However, I feel I must inform you that, droid prejudice aside, T3 models exhibit excessive individualism when not routinely memory wiped. This individualism can become such a nuisance that even a droid such as myself is tempted to reduce them to their base components, if not crush them into slag. But enough of my seemingly irrelevant tangent. Where did you leave the droid, Master? That would logically be the best place to look. Answer. Ah, then that would explain why such a T3 unit isn't here, Master. I believe my photoreceptors are functioning adequately enough to verify that. Greeting. It is a... Answer. That is all that remains of the maintenance officer, Master. At the end, he was quite incoherent from the pain, and attempts to facilitate communications with him proved useless. I heard his dying screams as the droids he tended turned on him, mining him like a piece of asteroid rock. Recitation. Oh, yes, Master. The record of his last moments were... Five droids, burning through the outer door. They're, they're forcing their way into the bay. Please, someone with it! Oh, oh no, they're, they're through! Oh, my leg! They're burning through my leg! Oh, stop! Stop, please! Addendum. His remaining attempts at communication are variations in Decibel Master, ranging from frenzied screams to gibbering inarticulate attempts to beg for his life. Objection. Master. To commit such an act would be in violation of the ethics programming most droids are believed to possess. I am afraid there is nothing that can be done. Proud answer. Master, I believe my vocabulator is working adequately enough to accommodate your request. A recitation. Maintenance control voice print ID R1B5. There. Was that sufficient, Master? Alarmed objection. Oh, Master, no. I might inadvertently speak such a command near a console and accidentally unlock something I shouldn't. I was merely speaking such to prove to you that I could. It is a trait I'm quite proud of. Confused query. I am sorry, Master. Were you speaking to yourself? 